Hello guys and dolls and welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing a review and sort of an introduction to the Charlotte Tilbury line uh, which has just launched in the US and I'm pretty excited about it. If you guys don't know about Charlotte Tilbury, she's a very famous makeup artist. I mean, name a celebrity, she's probably worked on them. And she's really well known throughout the industry. She is a UK based uh, makeup artist and so the line actually launched last year in the UK and it's finally launched in the US today and I'm so excited. The other thing that is so exciting for me is that this is a cruelty-free luxury brand and that's not very common. The only one I can think of for sure that I know that it's a true like luxury type brand uh, is Hourglass. I know they're cruelty-free as well but this is really exciting to me to see a, a gorgeous launch from a cruelty-free company. They don't sell in China or Brazil which are two companies that require animal testing so for those of us who'd like to buy cruelty-free products it's really really exciting. Now let's go ahead and start talking about the products. So the first thing I want to show you is the box that they sent me which is this beautiful, beautiful deep burgundy color with the rose gold or copper, whichever uh, you know name you prefer for that. It says Charlotte Tilbury. It has her little logo here. And then I opened it up and I like squealed with delight because. How cool is this? So it has like little tutorials on this. I know that they do have these tutorials online for you to see and then the products and everything. It was just like the most beautiful package I had ever seen and I sat there like mesmerized and watched it. Now I would play the whole thing for you but it's really really long. It shows a few different tutorials of ways to use the products that were in this little kit. So to start off the review today I'm going to first talk about Charlotte's Magic Cream which is her iconic product. It's the star of the line. It's a thing everyone's super excited about. Charlotte's been using this special blend of her own special moisturizer backstage for years and years and years. Everyone was, what, has been wanting to know what it was. She launched it last year at Selfridges and it was like hard to get a jar because apparently it kept selling out. It's just like, oh my god, this is so exciting. So this is a sample that I have here which was sent to me by Beautylish, so thank you guys. I have actually purchased the full size moisturizer but it hasn't been shipped yet so I don't have to show you. But the packaging for it is beautiful. Um, now in terms of me reviewing this, I'm not really comfortable reviewing a skincare item until I've been able to use it for an extended period of time. Because it's different from an eyeliner where you can use it a couple of times and go, yeah I like this or I don't like this or it does this or it does that. You know. Um, with something like moisturizer, your skin takes a time to adjust to something. It takes time for you to see if it really makes a difference. You can tell if you like things initially, like the texture or the smell and things like that. The actual review of the Magic Cream won't be coming probably until November because I want to test it out in September and possibly October as well. And I just know in October I'm going to have like Halloween videos and stuff so I don't want to promise a video for this. So. We're looking at November for an actual review for this. So in the meantime, while you guys are waiting for like a full review of what I think about it and everything, what I can tell you is that it's in a jar, so some people don't like jar packaging. You may or may not like that. For a thick cream like this, it doesn't bother me. And if you do want to preserve it, you can keep it in the refrigerator, something to keep the ingredients nice and fresh, which also feels really good at the end of the night, especially in it's like hot weather. It's like, oh, pat it on, feels so good. What I want to say is that it has a nice rose scent. It smells very much like something my grandma used when I was a kid. I don't know what it is, but I love it. I love it. And it's funny because I don't even, oops, I don't even normally like rose scented items, but I really like the scent of this. And this is a very moisturizing cream, so it's not something I'm putting all over my face. I'm putting it in my dry patches. I tend to get them like here and here and here and like around the nose and stuff. Um, I'm also placing it a few places on my body that I get really dry skin, like my elbows and things like that, just to kind of see how the product works. And so far I've noticed that it is really hydrating without being greasy and I'm a really really big fan of that because I'm not really a big fan of feeling greasy so so far I like it but again that full review will be coming for you guys in November. Alright the next item I want to talk to you guys about is the Cheek to Chic Swish and Pop Blusher. First of all let's talk about the compact. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's this beautiful oxblood color with the rose gold. It's so vintage looking. It's just it's beautiful. It doesn't look vintage in like an art deco kind of way necessarily. Um, it's very simplistic and I love I love the simplicity of it mixed with the beautiful glossy look of the compact. I will say for like a luxury type product it's a little bit lightweight. It's not that you don't get a lot of product because you do. Um, and in fact, these are 8 grams, which is a very generous amount for a blush. Let's compare that to like the Tarte blushes. Uh, these are 
5.6 so you do get quite a lot of product with these this is also on the higher price end range with the blush this is $40 but again you're getting quite a lot of product so this is what it looks like on the inside it has a mirror and it has um, the two-tone thing going on here and somebody on my Instagram said it looked like a boob and now that's all I see when I look at it so thank you whoever you are it's a Charlotte Silvery here and it has her little star a lot of her products have the little star on it it's like her little signature so with this blush you're intended to swish around the outside and apply it and then pop on the inside and then put that on like the apple of the cheek you have to use a pretty small blush brush to do that but you can I typically don't but I do swish around the outside apply and then pop in the center and then apply so the texture of this blush is really fantastic. It just melts into the skin. It has a luminous finish, but it's not shimmery. It's not frosty. So if you're a little, you know, on in the years and you're over glittery, shimmery blushes, have no fear. This isn't going to be like a, a glitter bomb on your face. It just looks beautiful and pearlescent the way that skin has a natural glow to it. It's beautiful one of my favorite things in the entire line I'm so excited about it I'm definitely gonna be picking up more shades of this blush it's just it's fantastic and I've worn this particular one almost every day since I've had it it's just this beautiful neutral peach let me go ahead and do a quick I just swirled them both together and do a little quick swatch blush swatches are terrible aren't they you know you know you, know, you don't really see it so much because they're always a little bit sheer than I shall but you can see there beautiful and I'm wearing it of course and it's just oh god I love this and it's so pretty and I just I love it love it love it and I definitely am going to be getting more colors of this um, if I was going to give it one little criticism it would just be that because it's a glossy finish of the packaging it does hold fingerprint prints prints <laughs> um, not a terribly big deal definitely not a deal breaker for me but it's something that if that is important to you it's something to keep in mind the next item I'm going to talk to you guys about is the Lip Cheat. This is a waterproof lip pencil and this one for me texture wise is like in between an Urban Decay lip liner which is very soft and very creamy and also water waterproof, waterproof, um, and then the MAC lip pencils which are a little bit more on the dry side more like a traditional lip pencil. Um, so it's kind of in between those. It's not super creamy but it's also not very dry like the MAC pencils. Now I also went ahead and did swatches of all three of these for you just to kind of give you an idea of the color so this one here is the lip cheat this is kiss and tell from Charlotte Tilbury then I have 69 liner from Urban Decay here and then finally cherry lip liner from Mac so it's a bit brighter than cherry it's a little bit more neutral compared to 69 but it is still a cool toned red lip liner the only criticism I really have of this is that it doesn't say anywhere on this pencil what the name of the color is. Now I do think there's a limited color range for this so it's not like she has a whole bunch of red lip liners so you're going to get them confused. But I do think that the color, the shade name should be on the pencil itself not just a color indicator here. So that's one thing that I do hope that they change like they notice when people are reviewing them that they're saying hey this doesn't have a name on it and they're changing it. Like I, I keep like turning it over like does this really, really not have a name? Does this really, really not have a name? It doesn't on it, but it did say on the box, but just none of the product itself. So that's really only the only criticism I have this of it. This next item I'm really excited about, this is the K-I-S-S-I-N-G lipstick. This is the color Love Bite. Let me go ahead and give you a little shot of the lipstick. It's a nice bright red. It's a very warm toned red. It's not quite orange red, but it's definitely on the warmer end of a red lipstick. And can we talk about this tube? It's a beautiful, beautiful vintage style tube. It does say Charlotte Tilbury here on the inside. Uh, and this is the tube. It has her little logo here at the top, rose gold. Oh my gosh, how collectible are these? This is just gorgeous. I think it's always a really, really smart idea to have a really beautiful tube for lipstick. And another example of a company that has done that is the Urban Decay. Lipsticks are absolutely gorgeous. A lot of you have been asking me about my Revlon lipstick that I got in the vintage tube. Very, very similar. You can see the inspiration. They're both definitely inspired by the vintage packaging, and I really love that. It's a very creamy lipstick. It's very opaque in coverage. It's, you know, just a great, great lipstick formula. It smells like vanilla. So those of you who love MAC lipstick, it doesn't quite smell like MAC lipstick, but it, yeah, if you like that, you'll definitely like the MAC lipstick smell. 
You get 3.5 grams of lipstick, which is a very standard amount for lipsticks. So that's good. It's a nice, you know, round, normal amount of product. So here is a swatch of the lipstick. It's a little bit more on the warm side compared to the lip liner, um, but that, that's good. I mean, you can balance it out with the lip liner. I did today. I used the lip liner first and then went over it with the red lipstick. What I love is that this is a luxury lipstick, both in terms of the feel of it, but also the tube itself. It's so collectible, and I'm so excited about this because I've always wanted to buy like a YSL lipstick or something, but I hate the way that they smell. They have like that just perfumey. I just I can't get on board with it, and they're not cruelty free, so I feel guilty about it. This is cruelty free. It smells great. I love it. So I've already bought three more of these because I just I can't I can't stop myself. They're so beautiful. Considering that I've almost never bought like a true luxury lipstick, I'm pretty excited about it. So um, moving on to the lip gloss, which is quite a different story. So here we have the lip luster, which is the lip gloss in the range, and I really love the packaging for this. How it it has that octagonal shape to it where the corners have been banged off the square so it almost glimmers when you look at it when you move it you're like ooh, lovely 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 um this is a very sheer gloss it has a honey like texture but it's not very thick so what i mean by honey is it feels like thick on this on the lips like it has like a nice smooth viscosity to it but it doesn't feel sticky like putting honey on your lips would feel so it's non sticky well it's not completely not sticky but it's not horribly sticky, if that makes sense. It's a very comfortable lip gloss to wear on the lips, very similar to like MAC lip gloss. Um, it has a vanilla-like smell that I really enjoy. It's very sheer lip gloss, so it doesn't really impart a whole lot of color. I basically feel like this is kind of average for a lip gloss, and the fact that you only get 3.5 grams and it's $22, to me, I don't think that this is something that I would probably purchase another one of, and it's not one that I really recommend. If, if you're going to pass on anything in the line, this would be the thing that I'd probably pass on because I feel like lip gloss is just a huge world and there's so many great ones out there and there's just not room in my collection for a $22 lip gloss that you don't even get that much product and the color's not that exciting. So just keep it in real. The next item I'm reviewing is the Full Fat Lashes, which are meant to give you curl separation, volume, and drama. Five star mascara is what this is called. Um, now, I, I have to preface any mascara review that I do with the fact that every single mascara ever, ever, ever smudges on me for the most part. Um, real, realistically, I, I can only use tubing mascaras without them smudging. So what that means is like latex-based water resistant mascaras that come off in little tubes with warm water. So ones that I like are like the Cl Clinique High Impact Mascara or the Blink Mascara Amplified. Just any of these latex based mascaras are always my preference because they literally do not smudge. I never have raccoon eyes from them. But just because that is something that happens for me doesn't mean something's not a good mascara. So I do like to try them out and see how I like the effect of the way that they look and things like that. The one thing that I don't really get out of these mascaras is I don't get a combination of volume or length. I kind of get one or the other. Um, I'll get a little bit of separation or I'll get volume. I, you don't really get all of those things. What I have found with the full fat lashes is that I really like the definition and the volume that I get. It holds curl great. It really does everything that it says. It does give you length. I'm wearing it today and I think it looks great, but you guys will notice got a little bit of smudging happening. Let's go ahead and zoom it in so you guys can see. So if you can see, I do have the Telltale Mascara Ring here, which is kind of sucky. <laughs> It, this has lasted about three hours before it started to smudge, which is pretty impressive because a lot of things on me actually smudge after like a half an hour. But I will say that this is something that's like either a high maintenance situation where I'm going to have to bring a little bit of makeup remover to get it off my under eye and then a little concealer to, you know, fix it up. But really, I usually do that anyway, just to be sure. The other thing I could use this for is when I'm doing a smoky eye and I want it smudgy and smoky anyway. So I do really like this mascara. I'm really hoping they come out with a waterproof version because I'd be interested to see if that would smudge on me or if it would last and be my new holy grail mascara. The next item I'm going to talk about is the Rock and Coal eyeliner, which, by the way, is like the best name for an eyeliner ever. Um, so this is a very, very creamy pencil. It's definitely a coal, waterproof coal pencil. It blends out beautifully. Seriously, I think that this actually blends out better than my Urban Decay 24-7 pencils, which I'm obsessed with, and those are my favorite. I actually think that this one blends out more beautifully because it blends out a little bit more evenly, whereas sometimes the Urban Decay ones, when you first put them on, they kind of smear right away when you go to blend them. Sometimes you have to like reapply more and then try to blend it again. Whereas with this, I found that it was really 
really easy to just apply it and blend it. It stays super opaque, um, so it's almost like it's like a thicker formula maybe. that Maybe that's why it, you know, blends out a little nicer because it doesn't just kind of wipe away. I'll show you guys a shade comparison. So here I have a Milani eyeliner. This is the Milani Liquify pencil. Then I have the Urban Decay Perver Perversion, which is the blackest black ever. And here I have the uh, Rock and Coal in Bedroom Black. Now, it's blacker than the Milani one, but of course it's not blacker than Perversion because Perversion is like the blackest black ever. But, um, you know, really I think it's about as black as you need. You don't always need to have Perversion, which is, you know, that super mega ultra black. Um, but I did want to show you guys that for comparison. Two more things I want to mention about this pencil. The first is that it, again, doesn't have the name anywhere on the pencil. And again, I turned it over and over and over. Like, I, I've got to be missing this. But it's just not on there. So please put the name of the product on the pencil. I know it does have the shade indicator here at the end, but this is a dark tube. So if I had the brown one, they would look somewhat similar and I'd constantly be opening them up to figure out which one was which. And you know, anyway, um, the other thing I want to mention is that if you wear contact lenses, you might not want to put this one in your waterline. A lot of waterproof pencils will do this. And if you wear contact lenses, you know all too well when you put an eyeliner in your waterline and then it kind of clouds up your contact lenses. When I was filming my Vegas video that I put up just a couple days ago, whew, that was so hard to film because it ended up clouding my contacts and I had to put new ones in and it was just like a whole big thing. So this one I will say is probably one of the worst ones I've ever had of that and maybe it's because it has that thicker texture. The one way that you can avoid that is to pull out your waterline you know, draw it on and then really let it dry or even take a q-tip a dry q-tip and run it along very gently to try to wick away any of that excess moisture while it's trying to dry it's kind of a lot of work to do so whether or not this pencil is going to be really exciting for you it's going to be whether or not you want to wear it in the waterline or not whether you wear contacts or not i really like it i still think that it blends out beautifully and it's one i'm going to wear on my lash line and my upper eyelid a lot in fact i wore it today but it's not one I'm going to be wearing my waterline because I have that clouding of the contacts and we just can't have that because no. The final thing I want to share with you today is the luxury palette. So here is the palette here. I really like the overall design of it. I like that you know, it's very classy and clean looking. I like that it's square. If you had a bunch of these, it'd be easy to stack. You know, like sometimes like they're like bubbled over or something. They're, they're a little more difficult to stack. So I do appreciate the clean lines and everything like that. So when you open up the palette, it looks like this. You have the little star here in the corner for her little, you know, her little signature star thing. And you've got the mirror. Um, it does stay up on its own which is really nice you can actually use this one pretty well um, I think it's a little bit magnified which is a little scary <laughs> um, and then you know you have the four shades it says Charlotte Tilbury one thing I really like it's a little messy because I just watched it but one thing I really like about this is that there's no superfluous packaging you know it's very clean it's kind of small and a little bit lightweight so it doesn't have quite that luxurious feel that you might want for a $52 eyeshadow palette but it is very nice and I do appreciate the clean design of it and uh, it has the rose gold on the inside now the packaging and everything has nothing to do with the product well so let's talk about that because I'm pretty excited about these quads the texture on these is superb it's almost like a gel powder fan freaking tastic I mean ser like when I say that I know there's like a lot of companies that have come out with gel powder eyeshadows lately but these ones almost feel wet which of course you guys can't feel through the internet but you know um let me go ahead and show you swatches so the first one is the prime shade and this one is like a peach toned beige really beautiful color I'm wearing it on my lid today it's just absolutely gorgeous really really pigmented the next one is the Enhanced shade, which is this grass green. This one, to me, is just really beautiful. Um, it's not actually my favorite in the palette, um, because my favorites are these two on the bottom, but it, it is a good grass green color. It's a little bit less frosted than the other two. Uh, then you have the Smoke color, which is this amazing deep dark teal that I'm kind of obsessed with. And then you have the Pop shade, which is the absolutely gorgeous olive color with a little bit of a golden shimmer and I love 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 it now the one thing about this palette is I do kind of wish that there was a matte included just because it's shimmer 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 and it's a little overwhelming on shimmer and I do like to have a little bit of more of a mix of texture however two things because you have a darker color you can usually get away with doing an all shimmer look the other thing too is that it's 
so easy to just supplement in one or two matte colors from what I have so I'm really not too upset about it because the colors are all fantastic. The thing I want to mention is that this pop shade does have that beautiful shimmer and a lot of times when you're using a shimmery or a glittery eyeshadow you see the glitter in the pan you're like oh I'm so excited so you're like yeah and you put it on and then pff, where did the glitter go? You have no idea because it's not on your eye. Whereas with this one the glitter actually does transfer really well to the eye so I'm pretty excited about this. The only other thing is again you see that this really holds fingerprints pretty badly so you know, you're going to want to like wipe it down when you're done using it if you want it to remain nice and clean looking, which I typically do. Um, but overall, I really love this eyeshadow palette. You get 2.5 grams of product for $52, um, kind of an average price for a luxury type palette. And I am excited about this. I want to get more colors. I want to collect these. I want to collect the lipsticks and the blushes. Those are my absolute favorites for the whole thing is the eyeshadows, the blushes, and the lipsticks. So these would be my absolute product recommendations from Charlotte Tilbury. And that is my review. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I know it's kind of a long one. There's a lot of stuff to cover. And um, I want to reiterate again that this is a luxury line, so it's a little bit different from like an average everyday line. Like, okay, for instance, like MAC is like a mid-range brand. You know, it's not luxury necessary. It's mid, mid-priced, mid-value. You know, it's kind of an average brand really um, whereas something like Charlotte Tilbury goes into that luxury category along with like Christian Dior and YSL and um, you know things like that. So if you guys are interested in seeing a tutorial for the look that I'm wearing now I will have that up for you guys tomorrow. I really wanted my first tutorial with this you know stuff to be a bombastic you know green obviously eyeshadow look but it just didn't work out that way I didn't end up having the time this week to go ahead and do that for you so I will have that up for you next week. It's already planned out. It's really gorgeous. I think you guys are going to love it. So I'll see you in that video. See you in my next video. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Finger pointing. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. Remember to just be yourself. See you. Bye.